Hi, and welcome back to Bounce Forward with me, Tiff Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present. Everyone tends to skip their cool down and I get it, you're busy man. It's so important that you cool down so you don't get lightheaded after training or dizzy or injured. These are just some of the things I go through in today's episode. This one's from Samantha. What is the importance of mobility and stretching post-exercise? I get really confused about it and don't know the difference. I always just do my workout and then rush off But is it something I need to start incorporating? Okay, I know cooling down can be a drainer, especially when you're time poor. And I I do it myself. I'll go for a run and I'll just get inside, do a quick shower and I'm, you know, getting on with the next thing. But it is crucial for several reasons. So it gradually lowers your heart rate and blood pressure, which you really need after physical activity that's been quite intense your blood pressure and your heart rate's up. So you need that cool down period. Um, Lighter exercise, stretching, mobility, it helps to gradually settle things down and it stops you from getting dizzy. And and sometimes even I've had clients faint, like it can be really hard. You can't just stop. It also prevents blood pooling. So vigorous exercise, your blood vessels expand, your muscles pump up. And if you suddenly stop, your blood can pull to your lower extremities, like your legs and things, reducing blood flow back up to the heart and brain, which can lead to lightheadedness. So if you ever feel a bit lightheaded after training, you need to cool down and reduce this. It promotes a lot of waste removal from muscles as well. So exercise produces metabolic waste products such as lactic acid and cooling down helps the body to circulate blood more effectively which which really aids to remove these like lactate and and you won't get as sore and you won't get as stiff and it also reduces muscle soreness and so if you've ever heard of DOMS delayed onset muscle soreness cooling down helps to reduce the DOMS and this is due to you know anything stretching you know, doing some flexibility, a bit of mobility. You've got better recovery. Of course you do as your body's temperature gradually comes down, the waste products go from the muscles and you're definitely going to have a better recovery and faster. And then you've got psychological benefits too, which no one really talks about. It's that transition from intense workout back to normality. It's a time to reflect on the workout, relax, And it really does reduce that immediate high of endorphins, helping to bring that state of calmness and well-being back. And also it prevents an injury, right? So they're my main things. And it generally takes anything from three minutes to 15 minutes. So you ask what is the difference between mobility and stretching? Now, mobility is better for a warm-up, I'll be honest, and stretching is better for a cool down. Mobility is the range of motion available in a joint or a group of joints and it encompasses flexibility of the muscles surrounding the joints but it's more about the ability of the nervous system to allow for movement. The focus of mobility exercise is on improving functional range of motion and the control you have over that range It's often dynamic movements that take you through a full range of motion. So, you know, swinging your legs or um, reaching to the sky out of a hip flexor stretch. Lots of dynamic stretches, moving parts of your body, increased reach, speed of movement or both. And it's got a lot of rotations, active stretches, functional movements that mimic real life and like athletic activities. And mobility exercises are mostly part of a warm-up routine. So they prepare the joints and muscles for the range of motion that you'll have during the physical activity you're about to do. Whereas a static stretching involves extending a muscle to its furthest point and then holding that position for a period of time, like 15 to 60 seconds. And the primary focus of a static stretch is to increase muscle length and flexibility. It's less about movement and more about holding a position to lengthen and relax that muscle. And in a static stretch, there should be no bouncing or rapid movements, you know, like a hamstring stretch or a quad stretch or an arm stretch. And it's the best way to cool down 
it helps reduce that muscle tension and it's easier on the body and the nervous system. Some of the risks in skipping your cool down is, of course, you're going to be more open to injury. Engaging in light stretching reduces muscle tightness and imbalances, which over time can prevent injuries. So you really want to make sure that you're looking after things like your calves because they're tight little muscles that can tear if you've been on a long run and then you just stop and go and have a shower. Like I hardly ever cool down after a run and I'm trying to do it and stretch out my calves. It's really important. You can get dizzy. You can get lightheaded. You can faint. And also there's the overtime repercussions on your nervous system. So your nervous system has to come back to a state of homeostasis where it's just normal. And over time, if you're not giving it recovery, you're increasing that fight or flight mode in your body where you're, you've got more cortisol and stress hormone in your system. Over time, you don't want that stress hormone in your system and it will impact your nervous system. You want to have the nice rest and digest nervous system, which is your parasympathetic nervous system switched on. So you can get on with your day and you've got more clarity of thinking. And there's so many benefits to being in the parasympathetic nervous system rather than the sympathetic, which is the stress. And exercise does stress the body and it stresses it in a good way. Like, of course, we need to stress it for it to adapt and to get results, but we don't want to stress it out without any recovery so that then it's like stress again going into the next workout and then I'm stressed because I'm at work and I'm doing emails and it's just stress on top of stress on top of stress. So you really do want to relax. Now, coming back to DOMS, DOMS stand for delayed onset muscle soreness that can occur after intense or new exercise. And this is pretty normal. Like you say DOMS and and people are like, oh, like do I need to see a doctor about that? No. Muscles take a little while. So they tear a little bit and then they take a little bit of time to rebuild and repair, but they could be a bit swollen. That's why you get the delayed muscle soreness. It's very, very normal to feel sore on day two or day three of your workout, you very rarely will feel sore straight away after your workout because that blood is pumping, there's good circulation, your body sort of protects you from that. But they do get stiffer and sore as the week goes on and that's very, very normal and it just means you need to put in there some recovery sessions, recovery days, days you have off the gym or maybe you swap out a gym workout for a recovery session completely and it will just help those doms move on especially if you're doing your strength training because oh they can be intense i think doing some of the static stretching in a cool down is great to have a really balanced fitness regime look at the mobility more for warm-up but please don't skip your cool down that's what i'll end on just don't skip your cool down and i hope this has made you think twice Thank you so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I love having your company, so please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know what questions you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app. Speak soon. Happy days.